Well, hello everybody and welcome to Girl Talk. And that's exactly what this is. It's girls talking, but we are talking about important things and some fun things too. It's not always super serious, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I wanna welcome you into the conversation. And if you want to join in on the chat, you can do that. We would love to hear your comments. And um, if you have something to say about what we're talking about, feel free to join in. We have ladies that are um, responding to your chat if you're watching this live. So feel free to join us. My name is Kathy Laurie. I'm Greg's wife. Um, he's the pastor at Harvest Christian Fellowship. And uh, it's my joy and privilege to, along with these ladies um, that are my dear friends and relative, <laughs> I'll introduce them in just a moment, um, to help bring about the, the women's ministry at all of our campuses. And, and there's some women that are a part of this ministry that are from other churches as well. And Melanie, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us Okay, well, I am so happy to be here. Um, Kathy and I are on the, in the same small group, so we got to Zoom earlier this morning. <laughs> yes, we did. But this is so nice to be able to see you face to face. And I'm just trusting that there's going to come a time very soon that we'll be able to actually embrace and, and hug know. each other. That day's coming, right? Yeah, until then, <laughs> it's six feet or masks. Right. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. I've been married to Bob for like 23 years, I think. It's 23, yeah. And I have two um, adult children that live at home. Yeah. And so I'm a mom and um, I have the privilege to serve in the women's ministry here at Virtue, which is like the greatest privilege of yeah. my life. You have been part of the Virtue Bible Study and long before we called it Virtue, since you were a little girl, you grew up in the children's ministry at Harvest and your mom was part of the church. And then you grew up and started attending Bible study and were, got married and, and now, um, you became a group leader and then a, a support leader and now you're a coordinator and a teacher. And all that to say, just a word of encouragement to the um, moms and the young ones out there, it's never too late to jump in to study in God's word. And if no other reason than the season that we're in, we realize how essential it is that we are in God's word, that he's speaking to us, that we feel that safety and security of our relationship with him when everything else in the world is kind of crazy. Absolutely. And, um, I love that you said that, Kathy, because I feel like the Lord's been reminding me of those things and just stirring up real gratitude because mm -hmm. I do come from a home where mm -hmm. I was raised, you know, to yeah. love Jesus. But I've also, um, I was raised as a little girl. You know, my pastor has been great, Pastor Greg, since I was, you know, <laughs> six years old. So, you know, that Sunday morning, you know, being poured into truth but then it's really the women's ministry Kathy that I um I learned to like daily it, it taught me that daily discipline mm -hmm. of being in God's word and you've said it mm -hmm. over and over and it's so it's so true that mm -hmm. we need to be able to hear God's voice for ourselves so that when we're not you know when we don't maybe get to do the you know um be with other people we can know that we can yeah. open his word and we can hear his voice as we yeah. as we read. Well, and now my beautiful <laughs> daughter in love, <laughs> Brittany, who is married to our son Jonathan, and um, is now a pastor's wife mm -hmm. alongside us here at Harvest, and also is uh, very integral in um, helping us at Virtue and the women's ministry as well. It's my yeah. greatest joy to not only have her as a daughter in love, but also to be serving side by side with her in ministry. Yes. So Brittany, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Yes. So I'm married to Jonathan. We've been married almost 10 years. I cannot crazy. believe that. I know. So oh my goodness. April 24th, wow. 10 years. So it's coming See? up. And then we have three kids, Riley, Christopher, and Allie. So... Been out of fun. order. Out of, yeah, I did. <laughs> Riley, uh, Allie, Riley, Christopher. Allie. <laughs> and they're so adorable. And um, each one is so different. Yes. They have they such unique. unique personalities. <laughs> but I must say, Allie is going to be the family historian. Yes. This child has every single day that we are with her 
And I don't, I, I imagine she's like this at home. She wants us to tell her oh, stories yes. of our childhood. She wants us to tell us the history. Like, I have ran out of stories. I told you every story <laughs> I could possibly remember. Yeah. I'm going to start making some up. I know. When and if you get the detail wrong or if you leave one out, she's going to call you on it. Yeah. She says, no, 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 Papa. That's not how it goes. That's how you said it last yeah. time. Yes, so, it's a joy yes, to, so. to see the Lord um, growing them up. But yeah, this has been, I know this has been challenging because you've been um, not just uh, working still at Virtue and doing all that you do, but you are also running a children's ministry <laughs> and you are <laughs> educating cool. your kids as I know many of you mothers out there are. I think pretty much every mom in America, I think, I think I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. I think most of us have all become homeschool moms, which is, which is crazy. I'm laughing because I saw the funniest video <laughs> of this woman oh, who yes. said, I am not a homeschool mother <laughs> and dear Lord, protect us from the, the attack of the common core, yes. <laughs> the common core map. I cannot do this. Yes. But you have to, right? Right now, yes. we don't have any you other have choice. To. You have to. So... Um, yeah, it's crazy. So obviously, like, I was like, they are not going to cancel school. And then school is canceled. And then they canceled school for an entire month. Like, that's crazy. And then they're like, no, it, you're just like not coming. They're not coming back to school for the rest of the year. So you're like, okay. Yeah. But um, early on, I just I read was reading through Ecclesiastes. And I'm, I'm so thankful that the Bible is so practical and just <laughs> gives you like, basic wisdom yes, that yeah. you can use even today. So in Ecclesiastes 11, five through six, it said, um, just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon <laughs> for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. And I loved that. Oh, that what translation is that? It's That's New beautiful. Living Translation. I love and I that. just, I loved that, those two verses. They just, they really ministered to me. I mean, in this season, you're like, yeah, I don't understand the activity of the Lord right now. Like, this seems crazy. The world seems out of sorts. You know, I might not feel like I'm made to be a homeschool mom, but <laughs> here I am, you yeah. know? So, and I, it kind of motivated me too, just like the last, the last verse saying, plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. <laughs> um, Cause you, you don't know what yeah. will come of this time or just yeah. the activities you're doing with your kids or your husband or things as a family. And just even being motivated to keep working and like not sit on Netflix all day and just yeah. kind of <laughs> chill mm -hmm. out. Like what else is there to do? But really, make this time meaningful, be purposeful with your day. Yeah. Um, not letting these moments, you know, get away because we could look back and this, you know, however long this is lasting, we can look back and be like, wow, we yeah. actually a lot came out of that time, even oh, though we boy. couldn't do a lot. I think it's shaping a yeah. lot, a whole generation. Yes. I think it is shaping a generation. I think they're going to look back at this time. And um, for the ones who really um, leverage this, I mm. want to use that word really intentionally, mm -hmm. to leverage this for the good, for God's kingdom, they're going to reap a reward. I think it's possible we could waste, we could yeah. waste this time. Like you say, totally. just Netflix. I mean, we are quarantined, but we are not quarantined from these devices. Yeah. We could be on Instagram all day long yeah. and just surfing the internet, looking at who knows what and waste this moment yeah. in time. Right, Melanie? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think at the beginning, everyone sort of like viewed it as, oh, I don't, have all the demands. I can just sort of like, you know, lay low, shrink back a little bit. And maybe for a little while, we all maybe yeah. did that. Yeah. Um, but then you have to be, you have to be on guard against that because as, as believers is what is God calling us, you know, to do and to be. And I think, and I love hearing Brittany talk about how she's, the word of God is so practical. And I, and I think you're going to encourage so many yes. young, young, young girls, because you're right where you need to be in God's word. And you're trying to find, you're asking the Lord, where does this apply to me? How do I 
live this out and activate it. Yeah. And that's wisdom is where you can say, okay, the word's telling me to be busy, you know, and you don't know what you're yes. doing during the day that's really going to affect your kids. Yeah, so I totally. think that's so good. And it I is think, so good. Um, Melanie, you <laughs> have to say this <laughs> because I, I do follow you on Instagram. <laughs> you are so um, disciplined when it comes to staying fit and stay, doing some healthy activities. And I know this isn't necessarily the most front and central aspect of what the Word of God teaches, but the Bible does teach that we have a body, a soul, and a spirit, and our spirits dwell within this temple, this physical body, and how during this time, I keep talking about the, what was it, the COVID-15, or I don't know, you're going to gain 15 pounds, and um, the, you know, all kind, all, all our discipline, all, I, I mentioned this the last time we spoke at Girls Hawk, is that all of the markers in our lives are gone. You know, we're not having to get up and even get dressed with anything other than just stretchy clothes and pull those on, and I just, I just think that maybe some of us might need a little word of encouragement that we, we think a little bit about what we're eating and think a little bit about what we're doing to stay healthy because what happens in our bodies affects our minds yeah. and that affects us spiritually as well. So we're, we're not separate compartments, yeah. a body, soul, and spirit. And okay, I'm going to be just spiritual. The body affects the spirit. So Okay, well, inspire first, us a little bit. <laughs> first of all, Kathy, I want to thank you for saying that you recognize that I'm disciplined. And it's it's funny because the Lord really has been speaking to me about this very mm -hmm. thing because, you know, we were talking earlier about what our happy place is. And I feel like my happy place is when I am at the gym and I'm exercising, I'm getting a good sweat on. And I have, you know, and I'm a structured person and I like knowing that this is the class I'm going to show up for and I'm going to work hard and burn this amount of calories. And and so on and so forth. But what the Lord's been showing me mm. is I've been like kind of being proud about discipline, but he's showing me that I'm a little bit rigid mm. and I need to be a little more flexible about okay. what my day looks like my, and, and, you know, having all had, having it all laid out for me. And because um, everything looks different, I'm still exercising, but it's yeah. different and yeah. I have to be okay with that. And I think for all of us, our lives are just different. I think that's the word that sums it up, <laughs> you know? And um, Okay, but you know, some of us are way, way, way Way, way, way relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, Melanie, I'm not looking for being a little less just if I need help. Me. So, so the word the Lord was giving me is, yeah, you know, man makes his plans. Like it's okay, mm -hmm. make your plans, but yeah. the Lord orders our steps, meaning like loosen up a little bit. Your day might look a little different. So for me, I know that I need to exercise a little bit every day, even though it's going to be different. Yeah. And I think it's good. I think, like you said, you know, um, physically that helps us. You know, I get it a little bit of an endorphin release, and you know. No, I still want to, but you know, Bob tells me, um, would you stop being, don't think you need to be skinny during quarantine. And I needed to hear that. I go, okay. Like I'm I don't want to, free. Yeah, I don't want to go totally off the deep end, Yeah. but, um, finding the balance. It is. It's finding that balance and just doing what you can. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think even on my Instagram, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, killing myself for an hour, but yeah, you're doing, you're, minutes. you're maintaining, you're doing the right things. And yeah. you know, Brittany, you're like that too. I, yeah, I know that I have to get, I still get up early, like before my kids, that's yeah. like my normal yeah. routine that I would do. And I just kind of like purpose in my heart, like, I'm still going to do that because honestly, like that sets me up for yeah. the day. Like yeah. just getting out, you know, if you can find a place to run outside or whatever, I just do that. It's not my normal, like mm -hmm. what I would prefer to do, but mm -hmm. it's still, I'm getting exercise. I'm getting fresh air. Yeah. I'm getting like alone time. So when I come back home, you know, I'm kind of more settled, you know, yeah. I'm not just like yeah. waking up with the kids, like jumping right into, you know, work, school work, work and yeah. school and all of that stuff. So that's really helped me. And I know everyone's on a different level with, you know, like fitness or whatever, but honestly, mm -hmm. just even like mm -hmm. walking around the block or, yeah. you know, just something where you can be alone and pray and just, you know, be with the Lord yeah. and just kind of, yeah. Get, yeah. I think fresh air and yeah. like, a little bit of exercise. I, I would think that's a strong encouragement long. for the, especially the young moms out there that um, there is no alone time. Yeah. They're just, from the moment the kids get up, it's, I'm hungry, feed me, and you need to teach them, you need to do this with them, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that everything is getting done around the house. I just think it's like a, a nonstop barrage. I can only imagine that 
that's how life yeah. is. When you're home quarantined with more than one child, it's going to be a lot. Absolutely. But um, you get up early, but I think some people are not super early morning people. So maybe for them, yeah. it's like get the kids get up as early as you do, but get them to bed. Yeah, mm -hmm. get, get them, them to bed, bed and or... then you have your at the end of the day or just at some yeah, point any during the day. Thing, even if your yeah. husband, you know, can you watch them for like 15 I minutes know. and I yes. can go trade off. And sometimes honestly, <laughs> you don't you don't want to do it. Like pretty much almost every morning I wake up, I'm like I don't want to go do this like but when I'm doing it I'm happy I did yeah. it I'm yeah. like why do I why? like it's Put just you're yeah. always battling with yourself but when I'm on those walks or runs I you know I've been praying for just like three um things like every day what are they it's, was um I just pray for like strength mm. in the moment, mm. um, wisdom for the day and perspective for tomorrow. And like, that's pretty much as far as I can get because I think if you look like, I'm like, okay, I have 11 more weeks of yeah. like <laughs> oh. homeschooling and trying to navigate like yeah. all these different apps they have mm -hmm. to use and all this stuff, you know? So it's just like, okay, strength for those moments where, you know, you run into like conflict in your family or, yeah you know, you're worried or fearful just for maybe your health or the health of your family mm -hmm. or financially or people you know who are, yeah. you know, or just yeah. our country as a whole. Just as I go, you know, as I'm confronted with those, you know, those moments where I have, you know, two choices that like the Lord would just give me his strength to make the right choice mm. and that I wouldn't fly off the handlebars, you know, or I wouldn't let myself get swallowed in fear or, you know, that I would be gracious with my kids and my husband. Yeah. And then just like wisdom for the day, just for today, like give me what I need, yes. you know, to, to go to the choices that I have to make. Um, just God's wisdom is so practical. And we've been going with, with the, um, through first Chronicles, um, or first Corinthians with the kids in the morning. And it's just a lot about God's wisdom. And, and so I've been able to talk to them just like, okay, what do you think is a foolish choice? And what Ooh. do you think? And just going back to those. So good. Ground, so <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ground level <laughs> yeah. stuff. And just yes. really thinking like, no, God's wisdom. He's given us just like an outline to have. Um, yes. Just to get through life, like yeah. no matter what season we're in, what, yeah. what we're going through, like he's given us, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. tools we need to, to make the good choices. Yeah. Yeah. And then perspective for tomorrow, just meaning like even what you, we posted on our Instagram a few days ago, it's like you said, like, don't fret, like your, yeah. your job is just to yes. glorify the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and pray about everything. And decision. pray about everything. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know this our life just as a whole is just a tiny piece of like our eternal life and what are we you know we always have heaven to look forward to and that's lasting that's forever and so just to be and maybe we feel like oh we're not doing as much because we can't be at church or we can't be serving in church or like our more conference got canceled I and know all those things but it's mm. like I'm just it doesn't matter to the Lord what we're doing. It's our heart and what, how we're serving him just mm -hmm. in our families yeah. and just surrendering our lives over to him. Like it all counts to his glory Yeah, and that stuff lasts forever. Yes, so that I would just have a heavenly perspective yeah. that this, the world can be crazy, but if you just, if you have that heavenly perspective, it honestly, mm -hmm. it changes, yeah. you know, your whole outlook. Like, the whole okay, day. I, yeah. can, I can go on tomorrow. I can do this again tomorrow. <laughs> yes. so, yeah. So, and then this mm -hmm. scripture was, this was really good. It's um, 2 Corinthians 1, 9, and it's mm -hmm. the message translation. So, mm -hmm. but it says, it's Paul and Timothy and they, um, they're writing this letter and they just were in the province of Asia, but he said, you know, they were like having like near death experience. Mm -hmm. And he said, as it turned out, it was the best thing we could have. Mm. We could have instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get us out of it. We were forced to trust God totally. Mm. Not a bad idea since he's the one who raises from the dead. Oh, so good. And 
you know, we, God we took don't that have situation. a lot of control yeah. over no, things. No, we don't. I and mean, I think we're all, we're all realizing that yeah. obviously our circumstances mm -hmm. are different than Paul's, but you know, you're realizing like, I don't have a lot of control over what goes on and what's going to happen. I think this, I guess that is so strange. I think this whole, the whole world is not in control. Mm -hmm. And there, there are people over us that are making decisions that are affecting our lives. Mm -hmm. And, and we thought we were in control, Melanie. Yeah. But are, are we really ever in control of our lives? I know. Or do we recognize that <laughs> I know. there's only so much we can do and then we have to realize who is actually at the control center of the universe. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. But we know the controller with a capital C, right? Yes. And I think our plan, our part, and I've heard you say it, you know, Brittany, is, um, you know, to be in communication with that, with that controller. And I think I mentioned to you last time, um, Kathy, that I feel like God's even changed my prayers and my prayer life because there was a time when, when I prayed, I would think that I needed to tell the Lord how he should fix things and how he should be resolving things and moving in situations. And I've, I've since the Lord's kind of tapped me on the shoulder and say, Melanie, you know, he's so much wiser than us. He, and he knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. And so what he's asking me to do is, you know, all this time we're just being saturated with Bible study. Yeah. Pray back yeah. who this God that you've been studying for so long, who is he? Yeah. Praying back his attributes, his, his character and leaving him, mm -hmm. you know, leaving it up to him, how he's going to move and, mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and direct the circumstances, you yes. know, individually in our lives. And Kathy, I have to tell you, you really challenged me because, um, you know, speaking of prayer, um, you know, fasting should be a Christian discipline that we should all be employing. And I felt like you were the impetus that mm -hmm. said, um, I'm going to fast. Does anybody want to, you know, join me? And I think desperate times call for desperate measures. Yes. And I joined yeah. that. And I felt like God did a little breakthrough with that yeah. in me that I stopped telling him how I wanted him to mm -hmm. maybe change my husband's, you know, situation. He's a business owner. And I just saw the stress that he was mm -hmm. under. And, um, what does that feel like as a wife when you see your husband? I mean, I know what it feels like for me, but I want you to tell the ladies out there because I think so many are in that same position, either themselves are feeling the stress or their husbands are feeling stressful. Yeah. How that plays out at mm -hmm. home. It's, 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 it's difficult because someone you love, you see is just carrying this burden. And I know Bob said, I can't imagine, or I can't, ima or can't imagine how even the president of the United States mm -hmm. feel when I'm a president of my company and I feel the stress, not just of our family, but of all his employees and, you know, the decisions that he has makes affects them. Yes, yes. And I realized that he, um, I don't feel equipped to speak into his life or what he should do and how he should, you know, um, strategize. It's so over my head, mm. but it's also over his head too, because mm. there are, these are unprecedented mm. times yes. where you can't even predict, anticipate. Yeah. No. Mm. So my prayer has been, Lord, in that moment when he has to make a decision, give him supernatural yes. discernment mm -hmm. and wisdom yes. to make the decision that he needs yeah. to make that's right in front of him trusting yes. you yeah. know that you're guiding and leading and directing yes. him yes and um and I've been praying that way and I think it's okay that I say this but out of that fasting and prayer time the Lord was calling me to do I, I'm calling it Operation Jericho where every day oh. I would just go and I would rock walk around oh. his um mm. his business and just mm. pray and Beautiful. um Melanie because yeah. you asked what we can yeah. do when we feel so helpless yeah we can do the thing that is the most powerful thing and that is you know it's to pray it's, it's to, to intercede pray. yeah so and and I think that we as believers so often um we take it into our own hands like we have got to fix this ourselves yeah. and there may be times when God tells us specifically what to do but there are times when we just get too busy going and rushing ahead of him without wisdom without seeking and without prayer yeah. and the weapons of our warfare are spiritual and they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And Amen. for those of us that feel like we're in a tight place and we don't know what's coming next, God says, you are not powerless. Mm -hmm. You can tap into the power of the universe and, and through prayer experience that solution that God is going to bring about in his own time. Yeah. This is so, so important that we as 
um, as wives recognize that for a lot of us, um, our husbands are carrying tremendous amount of responsibility and weight on them. And uh, there's nothing harder for a husband or a provider, you know, he's the main breadwinner or whatever in your family or a substantial contributor to your family, at least that you um, recognize that those those pressures for a man to not feel like he can work. God made us to work. Yeah. It was before the fall in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam a job. He said, go out and, and till, you know, discover the secrets of the garden and make it flourish. And so Adam had a job. So even before the fall, it's not like part of the curse that we're to sweat by the toil of our, uh, by, the, by the sweat of our brow. But it's part of who God made. And if our husbands are at home and they're unable to do the things that they do, they're, they're under a tremendous amount of pressure. And I want to appeal to you women out there mm. who know men in your lives. Um, they are suffering as, lo- as well as you are. And they are carrying the weight. They may not express it the same way that you express it. They may not be as verbal about it. They may not emote. But we need to lift them up in prayer yes. because this is a tough time for them as well. And the enemy would love to just come into homes, mm-hmm. into marriages, um, and, and split mm-hmm. couples up and cause conflicts and fights. So we have to be especially gracious and uh, thoughtful in our words and in our responses oh, yeah. and yeah and our praying for them I, I just I love that, that the Lord has laid that on your heart Melanie and we're talking about fasting I mean the Bible does speak about fasting Jesus said and when you pray and fast mm-hmm. he doesn't say if he says when yeah and there is there are times when prayer and fasting are part of the weapons of spiritual warfare that right. we can do and Right. It's a constant reminder of the weakness of who we are yeah. that draws drives us to the strength of who he is. Exactly. And, um, and I believe God <laughs> will honor whatever effort yeah. that we can make because maybe somebody just, maybe somebody can just. Yeah. Tell us how it, some of the ways, you know, and says, oh, one I can fast. do that. But, you know, um, you can, you can fast and pray and it doesn't have to just be um, all day going without food. It could be one meal. It could be dessert. It could mm-hmm. be something that's very special to you that you are almost even addicted to. And you're saying, no, I'm going to give that up because in replacement, I'm yeah. going to be um, desiring the Lord. Yeah. It could, um, it doesn't even have to be food. It could be something like, um, an activity or social media. Yeah. And so those are all different ways that we can fast, but I truly believe God will honor whatever yeah. it is, whatever effort we make, you know, if our hearts are in that right place. And um and I think we have to be careful a little bit with social media mm. because as 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 good mm-hmm. as it can be because it could be an encouragement or it can be like a you know, we, we see something that reminds us and motivates us, but we have to remember that, you know, social media doesn't tell the whole story. You know, we're, we're probably putting like the best parts and we can look at that and go, Oh, well, their life is just so much better than ours or they're handling it so much better. Or I am so mad that they are doing that. (laughs) How about all the, the big backlash against celebrities who are talking about, Oh, this is so hard. I'm so (laughs) I'm quarantined in my mansion (laughs) and I'm sitting in a bathtub of rose petals. Aren't you sorry for me? I mean, we're all in this together. Yeah. yeah you with your hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank yeah. and you and your mansion and your gardeners and your maids and your whatever's all doing what they're going to do. And you're going to be just fine when this is over with. But yeah. there are others out there. It's like, ah, and that social media, like looking at that stuff makes you, oh, yeah. your claws come out. And speaking of claws, <laughs> I'm just, growing, I'm growing, I'm growing claws like Nebuchadnezzar. I'm like, I saw that earlier. I'm just waiting. I don't know whose idea it was, somebody's idea that I should get a gel manicure right before oh. this all happened. So I don't want to, I don't want to soak those off and scrub them off. So they're just like getting longer, longer, longer. And longer, but, and longer. See, this is first world problems, yeah, right? Our these are definitely first world problems right here. But we do have to be careful about comparison because one of two things can happen. We can look at something and go, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing so much better. And pride can set in yes. because we think yes. we're better than that. Or we can get depressed and discouraged because we feel like we're not measuring yeah. up. Yeah. So either way, it's like, yeah. you just have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, what are you calling me mm-hmm. to yes. do today? And yeah. I love that 
that you have that directive today, Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And and he says his grace is sufficient, you know, when we call upon him in that moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's okay to embrace our weaknesses and to embrace the pl- places mm-hmm. where we're feeling insufficient because the Bible does say those are the places where he can come in and strengthen mm-hmm. us and be our sufficiency. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I pray he's doing yes. that. I, I feel like that through this um this season, um, God is showing us things about ourselves yeah. that we have never, mm-hmm. never n- necessarily acknowledged or had put on display. That you know, there are certain things that come out under pressure yeah. that we can um, address before the Lord and pray about those things and ask Him for transformation. I mean, we have been praying um, for revival in the world. Mm. But have we been praying for revival in our own hearts? Mm. Have we been praying for fervency in our own lives? Have we been praying for fervency and revival in our own homes? Yeah. We're so busy doing other things sometimes that we don't. And God is just saying, be still. Right now, be still. And Brittany, what you said is just do what you can do. Give me strength for this moment mm-hmm. and, and show me. Give me wisdom. And how beautiful it is to see that at every level, and because I feel like we represent three different generations here, that God's word speaks to us in our circumstances. And uh, it just draws me back to the word of God, which says this so beautifully in Hebrews it was Hebrews chapter 10. I had, I had it opened and now I turned to <laughs> Corinthians when Brittany was talking. Yeah. So Hebrews Sorry. chapter 10, it says, um, let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another in love and good works. And yes, we cannot necessarily meet in our congregation or in our small groups face to face. I mean, we're only doing this for you six feet apart and we're being very careful and sanitizing and wearing masks as soon as the, this is over with. But, um, but we can still profoundly challenge one another, stir one another up to love and good works. And, and as much as possible, that's what we've tried to do here with this um, conversation that we're having. We've let you eavesdrop in and we want to eavesdrop in on your conversation. So please um, engage in the, in the chat room as you are able to. Our ladies and many of our virtue leaders and women at Harvest are there to interact with you and interface with you. But I don't know, you might be listening to this and you might be thinking, my goodness, these women, they're just talking about the Bible all the time. This Bible, Bible, Bible. It's not the Bible. It's God. It's Jesus. It's it's the Savior of the world who loves you so much. And he has become so much a part and permeated and infused every part of our lives. And, and we don't know what tomorrow holds. We really don't have... Um, a written guarantee of what that's going to look like, Melanie and Brittany. We don't know. And that can keep us up at night and wake you up at three in the morning and, and, and fill your heart and your mind with fear and anxiety. But what we do know is that God's promises are sure yes. and that his word is true. And those promises are for everyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. They are there there for us to lay hold of exceeding great and precious promises, which are ours. And I want to encourage you, if you don't know who Jesus is, or maybe you've been raised in the church and maybe it's your parents' religion or your parents' truth or, or, or faith that you've heard about, or maybe you at one time were walking closely with the Lord, but you have made some choices in your life that have taken you far from him and, and he's not a part of your daily life. He's not infusing every aspect of your life. And here you are quarantined with an uncertain future that you don't know. Can I just tell you, you can know that your future will be good, that all your bad things will turn out for good and all the really good things that you have in your life can never be taken from you and that the best is yet to come. Those are three points from a sermon by Jonathan Edwards written when he was 19 years old, centuries ago, but they ring true today and they can be true for you as well. If you put your faith in him, if you come to him and confess your sins and ask him to forgive you, he will bring you to himself. He will give you his Holy Spirit. He will give you the comfort and strength and instruction that you need. And he will make his word 
come alive to you because what we have is Jesus has left us his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit instructs us and shows us his will as we read his word. Amen. It's just the beginning of a beautiful walk with the Lord. And I pray that if those of you who have walked away and have, have turned your back on him or neglected it will come back. And those of you who have never put your faith in Jesus will put your faith in him now. So I'm gonna lead you in a short prayer and I'm gonna ask the Lord to come and to make himself real to you. And if you turn from your sins and turn to him, he will receive you as his child. You can pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that you are the savior who came into this world and died for my sins. I ask you now, Jesus, to forgive me of my sins for all of the things I've done in thought, in word, in deed. And I ask you to wash those away by the blood that you shed on the cross. Mm. Give me a future and a hope. Come into my life, Jesus. Be my savior and be my Lord. Speak to me, hold me and instruct me in these days that are yet to come. For I put my faith and trust in you. In Jesus name I pray, amen. amen. Can I tell you that if you prayed that prayer and you have put your faith in Jesus, you are a child of God. And I can assure you, not because I can assure you, but because God's word and God himself assures you that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's what his word says. And we want to help you in this walk with Jesus. And you can do that by going to the website knowgod.org and you will see the screen and you will be able to do that, access that on your computer or on your device. Please let us know if you prayed to receive him. We wanna do everything we can to follow up with you, to help you walk with Jesus, to help you get into a community of believers like we have here today, sharing with one another from the scriptures and from the word of God. And um, so do that, let us know and we'd love to send you a Bible. You can also follow us at our website, virtue.harvest.org, or you can follow me on social media, Kathy Laurie on Instagram and Facebook, as well as Virtue for Women on Instagram. We love you, we're praying for you. Keep encouraging one another. We have every reason to be hopeful. The best is yet to come. Not because I say so, but because God's word says so. God bless you and take care. Thank you ladies for being with me. Appreciate it.